Hello, my name is Lisa Ford and I'm the Associate Head of Research at the Yale Centre for British Art. Today I'd like to speak about the painting Allegory of the Tudor Succession, The Family of Henry VIII. As a 16th century Tudor political historian rather than an art historian, I look at our objects and paintings in a very different way. Historians have not traditionally looked at works of art as historical documents, but more and more we are thinking about how these works can give us political or social insights to the world in that time. You can't be sure that a 16th century portrait is an accurate physical representation of the person. The historian instead needs to focus on the reasons a sitter has the portrait done and what the portrait says about the personality of the sitter and the conventions of his or her time. With these ideas in mind, let's look at our allegory of the Tudor succession, the family of Henry VIII, which is a late 16th century panel painting by an unknown artist. When we say panel painting, we mean that it is painted on wood rather than on canvas. The allegory is a very popular picture, certainly one of my favourite, and never more popular than with the success of the television series The Tudors, and it's rare that any viewer of this painting can't name most or all of the figures in it. That's Henry VIII, the second Tudor King of England, seated in the centre. On the viewer's left is his daughter Mary and her husband Philip of Spain. To the viewer's right are his son Edward and his daughter Elizabeth. These figures may all look quite familiar, and that's partially because nearly all of them are based on set portraits generally done by hired court painters called pattern portraits. The figure of Henry VIII is very recognizably based on a painting by Holbein, and it's a standard depiction of him. Mary's is based on the work of her court painter, Hans Ewerth, who also served as a court painter for her brother Edward. Now, thinking about the painting in general, one of the first questions I ask students when we look at it is, how do you know this is a fiction, not a representation of an historical moment or scene? The answer is that Henry and his children could never all have been together at one moment at the ages and circumstances in which they're depicted in the painting. Henry died when Mary was 30 and still single, and Elizabeth was just 14. Both women in this image are full-grown adults, and Mary's husband, Philip of Spain, is included in the picture. Thus, the painting wasn't done simply as a 16th century equivalent of a family photo, but to tell us something else about the Tudors, in this case, about the succession. It's been established by a number of scholars that the essence of this painting is to proclaim the righteousness of the Protestant succession in England, during a time when some were still wondering if Catholicism would make a comeback, perhaps even hoping it would. The Reformation was a roller coaster process and shouldn't be thought of as a neat, linear, and inevitable event, but rather as a series of shifts in religion that often confuse the larger portion of the population. Just look at the allegory again. Henry was Catholic. He broke with the Roman Church and established Anglicanism, which was essentially like Catholicism without the Pope in terms of ritual and ceremony. His son Edward, or his son's chief advisors, were ardent Protestants and did their best to advance English Protestantism during Edward's rule. When Edward died, Mary, a lifelong and devoted Catholic, took over as ruler and tried to restore Catholicism. After Mary's death, Elizabeth ruled and tried for her father's brand of Anglicanism. By the end of the 16th century, it was clear that Catholicism was on its way out in England, and in the 17th century, anti-Catholicism became a strong theme, fueled by fears of French-style government in which papism and the tyranny of rulers were linked in the public mind. Even today, it's still against the law in Britain for a Catholic to be the ruler of England, or for the British monarch to marry a Catholic. This painting provides a strong visual statement of the belief that a Protestant succession was best for England. Henry VIII's position at the centre represents his central role in establishing the Protestant succession by breaking with the Catholic Church. He then hands the sword of state and the succession on to his son Edward VI, under whom Protestantism flourished further. And next to Edward is Elizabeth, who reconsolidated Protestantism after the Catholic disruption of Mary I's reign. Mary, the Catholic heir, is at the other side of the image, 
out of this line of Protestant tutors or, as one scholar said, standing opposite to the Protestant succession. The desirability of Protestantism is further emphasized by the figures behind the two queens. Mary and her husband, the Catholic Spanish Prince Philip, are trailed by Mars, the god of war. On the other side, Elizabeth is leading in the figures of peace and prosperity, peace stepping on a sword, prosperity carrying a cornucopia. So the left side speaks of war and disruption, and the right side of peace and prosperity, and the visual line gives both legitimacy of succession to Protestantism and to Edward and Elizabeth, if you follow the line of Henry's hand, the turn of his head, and the handing on of the sword. Even the colors promote the ideas being expressed, dark on the left, light and colorful on the right. Why make this statement at this time? Our image is dated around 1590, more than 30 years into Elizabeth's reign. There is an earlier version of this work dated tentatively to 1572, in which Elizabeth is dressed in an earlier fashion and looks much younger, so our work was modified to depict the queen at the proper age. The earlier version is inscribed as a gift to one of her ministers, Sir Francis Walsingham, of whom we also have a very fine portrait in the YCBA collection. Sir Roy Strong suggested that the first version was done to commemorate a peace treaty with France, and thereby the work was intended to deliberately set Protestant peace against the Catholic warmongering of Mary and Philip. But what would be the reason for repeating a similar work in the 1590s? We don't know who commissioned this painting, but it may have been a loyal subject who supported the Protestant succession and also supported Elizabeth. If so, perhaps they commissioned it as a triumphal work after the Armada victory, or perhaps in a time when discussion raged on regarding the dangers of Catholicism, they wished to show their own religious and political loyalties. Whatever the motivation, they've left us with a very interesting statement of the natural intertwining of religion and politics in the 16th century.